Hello everyone, welcome back to our series on energy modeling fundamentals with Honeybee. And in this video, we're going to add windows to our model that we've been constructing and go over a couple of different workflows for adding windows to your Honeybee models. So first off the bat, under the Create tab, you'll see that there's a whole subsection that has various components for adding windows to your model. And probably one of the most common ones that's used in very early design phases is this HP apertures by ratio. And so if I were to drag and drop this component onto the canvas here, and I'm going to make a little bit of room for myself. Uh, you know, maybe we actually don't even need this visualized by BC. I'm going to get rid of that for now. I'm going to keep the panel here. But you can see this apertures by ratio component. It allows you to plug in any Honeybee objects to begin with, like a, a Honeybee room that we have here. Right, we have coming out of this room from solid component uh, and it takes a ratio of window to wall area and it will automatically try to generate windows that fit that ratio and so the easy way that we can get a look at this is simply by connecting up our rooms to this component you'll see the essential workflow that a lot of honeybee model creation follows is that you plug in some input honeybee objects like honeybee rooms and you will get out edited honeybee rooms that then have those properties change to them. In this case, it would be assigning windows to them. So the other thing that I need in order to get this component to run, right, if I click this orange balloon, it will say I need a, a ratio. The input parameter ratio doesn't have any data. So I'm going to double click on the canvas, and I'm just gonna bring up a panel with a window ratio inside of it. You know what, actually, let's not do a panel. Let's do a slider. So if I can do a slider, that'll allow me to see a range of different ratios across the geometry that I have here. So I'm just gonna make a slider that goes, let's say from 0 0.1 uh, to 0 0.9. And so the easy way to do that is that you see, I just started typing 0 0.1, and then this is a nifty shortcut in Grasshopper. If I type less than, and then 0 0.9, which is the upper limit I want for the slider, and hit enter, Grasshopper will give me a slider that perfectly fits that range that I just, uh, I just specified here. So the nice thing about this is that I didn't have to make it going just from 0 to 1, uh, and it kind of gives me an intuitive set of steps in between this two. Maybe I'll leave this at 0 0.4 right now, but you can see you can drag it around like any slider. Uh, and I'm going to connect up this 0 0.4 to the ratio input. And then you'll see the component will run, and out of this component we're going to get an edited version of the input room. Uh, and the way that I could check that it's actually been edited is by plugging in this room to this visualized by type. And you should now see, yes, we have windows being assigned to the various walls of our, of our geometry here. And you'll see that I can do this in real time. I can actually just change the window ratio to something as low as 0 0.1 uh, all the way up to, you know, fully glazed. And the component will automatically try and respect this ratio. You'll see that there are also properties to tweak things like the window height. Let's say if I want to play around with uh, window heights from 0 0.5 to 2.5, I can just bring up a slider with that range using the same shortcut that I did before. And you'll see, right, the component will automatically try and respect. It will first respect the ratio as much as it can, but if it can, it will try and use that height uh, to, to specify the the actual height of those windows i can also change the sill height here to move the windows around there are a few different properties here basically you should be able to create most types of rectangular windows or re repeating rectangular windows with the various inputs that we have here uh, but there's also the case where you don't necessarily care too much about this detailed geometry a lot of the times when you're just doing an energy model the most important thing to get correct is this ratio and you don't want to have so many windows because that can make the calculation run longer so if you only want to get a single window what you can do is set this subdivide to false so i'm just going to do that right now if i bring up a boolean toggle sorry what i did there was double click the canvas type boolean toggle and made sure to select that and then I just uh, connect false to subdivide, right? That'll ensure that I still get just a single window at this ratio. And that can oftentimes make my, my calculation faster without necessarily changing the energy use too much. Although, of course, it's important to write, it's important to get the window geometry right for things like daylight studies or detailed thermal comfort studies. But in any event, I'm getting ahead of myself. 
maybe for now we'll just I'll just show you one other kind of nifty trick that you can do with this apertures by ratio component because I'll give you a hint that this is actually not the component we're going to use at the end. Uh, but there's what I want you to be aware of it because it is so useful in early stages of design. So let's go ahead and I'm going to delete these other things that we're adjusting the sill and the and the window height there. We'll go back to this. And I'm going to drag and drop this HB facade parameters component on the canvas. And so what this component does is it allows you to construct lists for different orientations so that you can actually specify a different window ratio for different orientations, which you can imagine is a very common energy saving strategy. Oftentimes you want to minimize as much as possible the amount of solar exposure you have on, on orientations like west and east. While you can maximize, you really usually want to maximize it on the south because you can get the nice low winter sun to, to help offset your heating load while getting it relatively well shaded in the summer when the sun is higher in the sky. So why don't I actually make a, a set of facade parameters that respect that type of strategy? I'm going to copy and paste this slider, and I'm going to put a much lower ratio on my east and west. We'll say like 0.2. And I'll plug in that slider for both of those. And then I'm going to copy and paste the slider and say for south, we'll do it, you know, a little more glazing, maybe at 50%. And uh, I'm going to copy this one more time. Maybe on the north, we'll do something like 30%. And you can see this is going to give you out a list of facade parameters that you can then plug into this ratio. And lo and behold, right, you'll see that the, the apertures by ratio component is going to assign that different amount of glazing depending upon orientation. And you know, you can decide maybe I want a little more in the north, or maybe I actually want to in some more on the south over there, right? You can play around with this and actually customize this. And this works across all sorts of uh, room geometries. I know this is just a single family home here, uh, but you can use this for a wide range of cases. All right, you guys got a sense of how this apertures by ratio component works. Maybe I'll just plug quickly the fact that there is a skylights by ratio component that does something very similar, but it's just going to add windows to the roof. Um, but as I kind of prophesied earlier, uh, we're not going to use either of these components to really assign windows to our, our house. And that's because we actually have detailed window geometries for this house already available in our Rhino file here. So I want to actually use these real geometries that I have here that I know actually match this house in real life. And I'm going to use those to generate apertures for my uh, room here. All right, so the unfortunate side effect of this is that I'm going to delete all of this, all of these apertures by ratio, the skylight by ratio, and the facade parameters. Let's just delete all of them right now and make sure that we have our window geometries available in the Rhino scene right here. So just like the room volume that I brought in, we have to bring these geometries, these Rhino geometries, into Grasshopper to be able to assign them to our model. So I'm going to select all of them right now. I'm going to double click on the Grasshopper canvas and bring up a native Grasshopper geometry parameter component, just like what we did with our HB room from Solid. And with all of these selected, right, you can see they're yellow. With all of them selected, I'm going to right click on this component and say set multiple geometries. And you'll see out of this, we now are able to get each of those windows as a reference BREP coming from the Rhino model. Okay, so, all right, so we have each of our windows here as a reference BREP. The next thing that we actually need to do in order to be able to assign them to our rooms is that we have to convert these raw geometry objects into, into apertures that have the properties necessary for energy simulation. Right, because just like the room solid, these are pure geometry. They don't have any constructions or things that you would need to be able to, to run them through an energy model. So I'm going to grab this HB aperture component from the zero create tab. I'm going to drop that on the canvas. And you'll see that this takes geometry as input, like our surfaces here, our Rhino surfaces, and, uh, and it will spit out aperture objects that can then be assigned to the room that have things like constructions assigned to them and things like properties for whether they can open or not, these operable window uh, properties you can see here. But in any event, I'm going to connect up our geometry, and you'll see out of this now we're getting aperture objects, each which have, have unique IDs. You can see are identifying them, them there. If you don't like these unique IDs, you can always assign a name to your apertures, by the way. I didn't really mention this with the rooms because we're going to circle back to it. But if I just want to say that these are, I don't know, I'm not feeling very creative 
today, but uh, we can say on a single family window, maybe it could be the name of our <laughs> our uh, our apertures here, right? We can just put that into a panel and then assign that as a name if we don't that don't like that unique ID. Uh, but you can see the component is still smart enough to make sure each one of these end up as unique. In any event, right, we have these are actual aperture objects. Uh, and in fact, I can turn off what I have in my Rhino scene right here. And because these aperture objects are our Honeybee objects, just like our rooms, uh, I can actually preview them with the same HB visualized by type component. So let me see. If I turn the preview off here on this geometry, because I got two things previewing on top of each other, I'm going to right click on that and select preview. We can actually see these individual aperture objects are now coming out of this visualized by type component. Uh, now, they're still not assigned to our room yet, right? We need to bring these two together. And for that, there's a special component called HB add subface. So if I drag and drop this component onto the canvas here, you'll see that this can take a parent honeybee object like our room, right? A room that's going to host these child apertures, uh, if you will. And it will take subfaces that are meant to be assigned to that, that parent object. So let's go and connect up our rooms to our honeybee objects. Uh, connect up our apertures to our subfaces, and now you'll see if I if I look at the output of this component, I'm getting an edited room, just like what we did with the with the apertures by ratio component, right? We pass the room through this component, we're getting an edited room out. But you'll see now if I plug this room into our visualized by type, it now has those specific window geometries that we uh, have set up here and brought into Grasshopper from Rhino. So this is how you can do, on a, on a very detailed level, specify the individual windows if you know exactly how they're arranged on your building, as we do for this uh, single-family home that is uh, my mother-in-law's house. So this gives you a bit of a sense of the workflows for adding windows to your models. You can see that there are sort of quick and dirty ones, like adding apertures by ratio, which are very useful in early stages of design where you don't necessarily have a full uh, window elevation drawn out yet. Uh, but if you are in a later stage of design or you're modeling an existing building where you know where the windows are, you can use this more uh, detailed way of specifying windows. So, all right, we almost have all of our geometry ready uh, to go off to a simulation, but we're at just missing some shade geometries at this point. And so in the next video, we're going to be covering how to assign shades to our model here uh, so that we can account for that within our energy simulation. So thank you for joining us through this video, and I look forward to seeing you in the next one.